GoForTheTwo.com. We're back in action after the hurricane. We were out a couple of weeks with a loss of electricity. We're back this week breaking games. We have our Week 12 preview of Wake Forest traveling to South Bend to take on the third-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. This is a big game for both teams, and let me tell you why. Wake Forest is 5-5 five and five overall. They're 3-5 and five in the ACC. They're fighting for a bowl berth. One of their victories was over Liberty. They're going to need to win their next two games to become bowl eligible, so expect an inspired effort out of the Demon Deacons this weekend. Notre Dame is 10-0. They're 6-0 at home. They're sitting at number three in the BCS, and they're, they're eyeing a possible national championship berth should Kansas State or Oregon lose one of their next two games. Can it happen? It's possible, but can Notre Dame get to the national championship game should Kansas State and Oregon both go undefeated? It's a possibility. They're going to need to blow out their next two opponents, Wake Forest and USC, to do that. It's an outside possibility, but they're going to need to play disciplined football over the next two weeks and show an impressive margin of victory, and I think there's an outside chance they can get there. Let's break Wake Forest down quickly. Statistically, they're struggling on offense. They're only averaging 20.1 points per game. They're 88th in the country in passing, 114th in the country in rushing. They're only rushing for 102.7 yards per game. They're going up against a defense in Notre Dame, only allowing 95 yards rushing per game. That's the storyline for offense right now. Can Wake Forest get some yards rushing on Notre Dame in order to put them into, into a position to score some points? They're led by Tanner Price. He's the quarterback. He's a gutty performer. He's completed 55% of his passes, 12 touchdowns, 6 INTs, but more importantly, he's been sacked 21 times on the season. Can the Wake Forest offensive line protect Tanner Price so that he can make some reads and get some yards in the vertical passing game? I think that's going to be a very difficult task for Wake Forest. When you look at their offense, it's basically a three-headed monster. They're led on offense by Tanner Price, their quarterback. The running game is led by Josh Harris, who's a very underrated running back. He has 4-3 speed. I was very high on Josh Harris at the start of the season, but he's having a subpar year. He's rushed for 607 yards, only 4.5 yards per carry. The running game hasn't gotten going because of the offensive line. They haven't blocked very well. They haven't opened up many holes, and that's a main reason why they haven't gotten a lot of yards rushing on the season. Without the rushing yards, that hasn't opened up the play-action passing game. Their leading wide receiver, Campanaro, is only averaging 9.5 yards per, ca uh, per reception. So they don't have a big play offense. And going up against Notre Dame's defense, they're going to have to get some yards vertical to spread out the Notre Dame defense. I don't think they can do that personally. They're undermanned on the offensive line to do that against Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame's defensive line will create some problems, will get pressure on Tanner Price, and create a lot of issues for the Wake Forest offense. But in order to move the football on Notre Dame, they're going to have to pull out all the tricks. Jim Grobe's a very good coach. He gets a lot out of his talent. He has a very good game plan in place to make his teams compete. It's just when you look at this ball club this year, they beat up on their victories. Their five victories are Liberty, Boston College, Army, Virginia. When Virginia's playing well late, but when they beat them, they weren't playing very well. And they beat North Carolina the second game of the season by one point at home. This is a road game for the Demon Deacons. They're a plus five in turnover margin on the road, so that is a plus for them. They're going to need to create turnovers and get some big plays on offense to compete in this ballgame. When you look at the Wake Forest defense, they're giving up 164 yards rushing on the road. That's rushing. They're going up against Notre Dame, who's averaging 198 yards at home rushing. So that's a very tough task for the Wake Forest defense 
going up against that massive offensive line for Notre Dame. And when you look at Notre Dame's offense, statistically, they're getting better week in and week out. They're protecting Everett Golson. They're protecting Tommy Reese. And they're starting to get more playmakers involved in the offense as the weeks progress. So Wake Forest will need to create turnovers this week. They're going to have to force and take some chances to stuff the running game of Notre Dame. They're going to need to take some run blitzes, blitz some linebackers, blitz some cornerbacks to create pressure on the Notre Dame offensive line. Whether they can do that or not, I'm not sold on that. I think it's going to be a very tough effort for Wake Forest to compete in this ball game. When you look at Notre Dame on the offensive side of the ball, what can you say about Brian Kelly and his staff? They've done a great job job in getting defenses to play their style of offense. Teams have not been able to dictate the tempo for Notre Dame. Week in and week out, they've been able to play their style of ball. They forced the action on many teams. They control the time of possession and have been able to run the football on every team they faced. They did have a scare two weeks ago against Pittsburgh. That woke them up. They did have a lackluster effort against Boston College, but I think Brian Kelly's holding back a little bit with USC on tap. Physically, Notre Dame is the more dominant team on both sides of the ball, on the offensive line and the defensive line against Wake Forest. I think they look to wear down the Demon Deacons front seven. They look to use their running backs, Theo Riddick, Sierra Wood and George Atkinson the third to wear down the Demon Deacons and methodically wear them down and get the victory. I do think they will be able to run the football on Wake Forest. I think that Brian Kelly is going to rely on the offensive line to just open up holes and look for a dominant effort out of the Notre Dame offense in the running game. I don't think he'll show too much in the passing game against Wake Forest with USC on tap. I think physically they have the better team and Brian Kelly and his staff will look to use that against Wake Forest. When you look at Everett Golson and Tommy Reese, they have been the perfect quarterback combination. Golson with his athletic ability rolling outside the pocket, he's made better decisions week in and week out. He's progressed. And if you've watched uh, Notre Dame, they've now gotten the ball out into their running backs. Sierra Wood and Theo Riddick in the passing game last week with Bo against Boston College. They've, they've gotten Tyler Eifert involved over the last couple of weeks. And that's a major uh, accomplishment as they get later in the season. If they're going to play in the national championship game, they need to have offensive uh, ingenuity. They're going to need to have options on offense. They cannot afford to be one-dimensional should they get the opportunity to play in the national championship game. And you have to credit Brian Kelly and his staff for doing that as the season progressed. When you look at the offensive line, they're playing disciplined, they're opening up holes, and that's one thing that Notre Dame has done over the weeks. They've maintained their composure. They're at home now, they do IUSC on tap, but they're disciplined. They don't create a lot of turnovers, and they don't create a lot of penalties, and that's why they're 10-0 and and 6-0 and at home. Defensively, they're only a plus two in turnover margin at home. They're better on the road in creating turnovers than they are at home, but they're led by Monty Teo and that defense. They're only giving up 11.1 points per game, and statistically, they are tops in the nation. They rely on their defense to dictate the tempo, to force teams out of their game plan, also on the offensive side of the ball, and that's a major reason why Notre Dame is 10-0. Look for Teow to be used on run blitzes. Look for him to get into the backfield against Tanner Price. I think Notre Dame has a convincing victory this weekend over Wake Forest. I don't see Wake Forest pulling off the upset. I look for a Notre Dame victory 40-10 to at home as they move to 11-0. I think you have to keep your eye out if you're a Notre Dame fan. 
USC has a very difficult matchup this weekend against crosstown rival UCLA. Do they get beat up by UCLA? I think USC can lose this coming weekend against UCLA. So if you're a Notre Dame fan, you have to keep an eye on that ball game and keep an eye out for Kansas State traveling to Baylor. I think the Baylor offense could create some some problems for the Kansas State Wildcat defense. I know I haven't been that high on Kansas State this year, and I've been proved wrong up until this point, but I think that the offense for Baylor can create some problems for the Kansas State Wildcats. Baylor's playing at home, and now this is back-to-back -back road games for Kansas State. They are the number one team in the country, so a lot of pressure falling on this team and Colin Klein, and do they perform? They've done it to date, but I think that this could be a possible trap game for Kansas State this weekend. So if you're Notre Dame, you want to see a dominant victory as they move towards the USC game, and you want to see either Kansas State lose to Baylor or uh, Oregon lose to Stanford this weekend. It could happen. Both two tough opponents for Kansas State and Oregon. So stay with us. We'll have our Week 12 predictions a little bit later in the week. But I think you'll see a dominant victory by Notre Dame this weekend, 40-10 over Wake Forest. Stay with us at GoForTheTwo.com.